This episode was made possible thanks to generous supporters on Patreon. This is the sixth and final part of the mini-series that I'm making about the so-called luxury courts. And if you haven't watched the previous parts, you can do so on the links down in the description. In the previous episodes, I addressed all these numbered chords and also the slash chords. And there is something left to be addressed as well. And this is a kind of special type of uh, category. And uh, these are the open string chords. And I decided to make a separate part of it because it's... Um, it's an important topic to address and usually it gets neglected and most people don't really talk about them and we discover them more or less on our own. And I just wanted to make this sort of guide to help you figure out how these chords actually work and how to use them. These open string chords are something like this or this and I'm sure that uh, most of you have played some of these either consciously or by accident but nevertheless uh, the open string chords are an excellent way to spice up your playing the chords I played a moment ago are the famous Alex Lifeson chords or at least this is how John Petrucci calls them because, you know, he's a huge Rush fan. And uh, they are both from the Hemispheres album and the first one that I played is right from the first track of the album and this is how actually the track starts. Now, if we analyze this chord a little bit more in detail, we will see that what we have on the lower four, four strings is actually something that looks exactly the same as a regular F-sharp major chord. And the difference is that uh, we've got the top two strings open. And this is how we get Now, uh, to understand how to name this chord besides being an Alex Lyson chord, uh, we need to figure out what these open strings are actually doing here. So, uh, we've got the basic of F sharp major, and then the first open string is the note E, which from the perspective of F sharp is a minor seventh which means that so far we could name this F sharp major seven, but we also have the second string, which is uh, the note B. And the note B happens to be the fourth degree from the perspective of F sharp again, or usually it's written uh, in the common notation as 11th. And this is how we get F sharp 7 added 11. This chord brings to me a very specific type of feeling. It's like both airy and open because of this B here, the 11th, but also it's somewhat tense and edgy because of this dominant 7 on top. So we get a very interesting mixture of them both. You can hear the same chords in uh, Dream Theater's track Metropolis Part 1. Also uh, the track The Chain by Mr. Big. Another good example is Rooster by Alice in Chains. If 
if you listen to this first song of the Hemispheres album, you will notice that uh, I had in the song there are some more open string chords and uh, they're more or less based on the same type of principle. We've got the four notes from a bar-like major chord and then we have the top two strings open. And here are a few examples. So this one is B major and the open second string is again B, it's root, so we just ignore it. First open string is E, which happens to be the fourth or eleventh. Therefore, this chord is B major eleventh. You can hear how open and airy and nice, fresh sound it has. It's almost like a fresh summer morning or something. And another nice example of uh, using this chord is uh, the track Touching Tongues by Steve Vai. It's a slight variation, but it's more or less the same. Another similar chord from the Rush song is uh, the same type of fingering, but starting from the fifth fret, which is A. And from this perspective, we've got uh, the first string is E, which is part of the chord, so we ignore it. The second is B, which is the second or the ninth, according to the common notation. Therefore, this particular chord should be named as A added 9. Here you can observe this very typical openness and airiness of the added 9 chord and it's a little bit more stable than the added 11 while it, it still has this um, open airy feeling. You can hear these chords in many songs but I think uh, one of the very good examples is again the song Rooster by Alice in Chains that I mentioned a moment ago because it appears right after this F sharp chord and it creates a very interesting contrast and here with F sharp we have this type of edgy openness and here it almost sounds like a resolution all up you can simply take this low four notes of a major bar chord and leave the top two strings open and just move along the neck and see what happens and on every chord pay attention how it sounds uh, if there are some dissonances that are annoying or not and uh, analyze what notes are actually these open strings from the perspective of the chord. Like if we start from here, this is very interesting chord. It has a very specific type of uh, tension, which is rather exotic expectation, kind of. And uh, that's the reason why Steve Vai used this chord in uh, his For the Love of God. Then we move to the next fret. Here we've got uh, the Alex Lifeson chord. Here we've got G major. B is uh, part of the chord. Ignore it. E happens to be the sixth. So this is G major sixth. This one doesn't really sound nice. Here we've got uh, something that we already addressed. Mm, not really. We address this one. This is interesting. This is C major. Here, first string is part of the chord. We ignore it. Second string is B and this is a major seven. So this is C major seven chord. Mm, no. This has interesting 
5 it's open and somehow nostalgic and this is the first string is uh, added 9 second string is B it's sixth or added 13 if you wish this doesn't work here we are all the way up to A major just an octave higher of course you can do the same thing with minor chords but it's a little bit tricky because the fingering is quite challenging if you want to have only these four strings but with the top two strings open you should play something like that and it's rather challenging especially if you want to integrate it into a chord progression and to be able to change it quickly so here's a tiny trick that you can do you can just skip the fourth string and just mute it and therefore you get this sounds almost the same but it's much easier to play and this is a very good example of a minor uh, chord with open strings. This one is F minor 711. Um, another one, it's a very beautiful longing type nostalgic chord. A minor added 9. Here we have B minor with E on the top, so it's B minor 11. Interesting, sad, but yet somehow open chord. Another good example of an Alex Lifeson chord comes again, uh, as I mentioned, from the album Hemispheres, but this time it's the last track. La Villa Strangiato and uh, it's this chord and it's beautifully arpeggiated you could probably recognize the G major shape it's just like this but it's moved all the way up to the 8th fret and this is where the note C is therefore this is kind of C major chord and again we approach it the same way and see what these two open strings in the middle are adding to the chord so we've got C major the third string is G it's part of the chord so we ignore it fourth string is D and this is the ninth of the chords therefore this is C major added 9 and now this is yet another fingering that you can uh, start playing all the way up to the neck and see what happens so if we come down here very interesting vibrant chord very full and ringy and uh, this is F major and these two strings at this is the ninth this will be the thirteenth or the six, sixth so it's a six nine chord oh, okay I see what you did there Nope. G major. Nope. This one is interesting. Here we've got G. It's the seventh, the minor seventh, which makes the chord dominant, so a little bit more tense and edgy. And D happens to be the eleventh, therefore we've got another seven eleven chord. is beautiful so somehow open sm and smooth and somehow nostalgic this is B flat major the fourth string open is D it's part of the chord and uh, third string is G and this is the sixth and this brings this kind of tiny sad vibe to the chord because it, it almost makes it uh, G minor, which is like the relative minor. And this one, no. 
this one we already addressed. No. This one is interesting as well. Uh, this is D major. Open four string is D again. It's part of the chords. We ignore it. And G is the eleventh. So this is D major eleven. This one is on the verge of being unpleasant. And the reason is that uh, here open third string is actually the third degree, so it matches the chord. The fourth string is a major seventh, which should work fine, but it's in such an octave that it clashes here with uh, the root. It's actually below the root, so it's like a major seventh with the seventh in the bass, which kind of creates this interesting vibe, a little bit unsettling. This one? Nope. And here we are back to F major, where we started from. And again, you can make a minor shape out of it, so G major, G minor, dark chords, very strong minor vibe. Uh, this one is interesting, it's uh, another 7-11 chord, this time A minor 7-11, and B, very interesting vibe somehow uh, there is an expectation in it and this comes because of this G added to the chord makes it like there is kind of G major in this chord and this brings the expectation type of feeling. So this is B uh, minor added flat 13 or flat 6, if you prefer to be more logical. Uh, what else? C minor added 9, very interesting sound. And interesting kind of unresolving chord, like too vague, almost like these uh, Debussy chords that are not going anywhere. And this one is D minor added 11. Now if we take a bar type of chord, just like we did with uh, the beginning of this Alex Lifeson chords, and move it to the fifth string, we will be left only with one open string, which is easier to calculate, but still gives some interesting options. And here we can have B major, for example, and first string is uh, 11, so this is added 11 chord, very beautiful and open type of chord, simple C major, this one is interesting, D major, added 9, plain E major, interesting type of F major 7 chord, F sharp, dominant 7, major 6. Interesting voicing. Uh, no. And here we are back to A major. And of course you can use the same type of logic to create minor chords. This is one I already addressed. It's B minor. Added 11, it's an uh, example that I used in one of the previous episodes, a song by Judas Priest. And we 
can continue upwards here it's just doubling the third degree if you wish to have it more ringy that's an option this interesting chord I've got a very uh, favorite example of uh, how this chord is used song by Dream Theater Hollow Ears we can again use two open strings for the sake of having more interesting possibilities and uh, there we will have like mostly uh, power chords like fifth chords but these are also very often used or you can use this type of uh, seven chords that are with no fifths for example or a very beautiful chord interesting shape of d minor seven added nine added 13 nice voicing of e minor seven mm, not really nice voicing of F sharp minor 7 with 11, another 7 11 chord. Nope, this is interesting. G sharp minor 7 with added flat 13, interesting voicing. A minor, A minor 7, 9 actually, 7, and here is the 9th. Another shape that we can use from the 5th string is the C major shape and this is actually something that you can see quite often this type of D major it's very very rich sounding it's D major and here we've got two open strings 3rd and 1st and from the perspective of D 1st string is the ninth, so we've got added ninth. Third open string is G and this is the added 11th. So it's 9 and 11 without 7th. And this one actually could work if we don't play the first string because third string is just doubling the third degree of the chord. This is interesting. F major, 7th, 9th. Nope. This is kind of interesting. G major, 6th. Nope. This is curious voicing. A major, 7. And. This has very, very nice sound. It's B flat, six, and here we get sharp 11, very disturbing, yet somehow weirdly, sadly soothing chord. And this almost sounds like uh, G minor. And actually I used this in one of my tracks from my previous album Opus 1890 in the song uh, Master of Lightning Using shapes from the 4th string is rather difficult because if we take the most common uh, chord starting from the 4th string D major and 
script here actually the only open string is the open D and this brings us to another interesting variation of open string chords which would be uh, moving the chords and keeping the bass note the same and one very good example of that is the song by the band Extreme and it's called uh, Wholehearted and the intro goes like this So, what we have in the beginning is playing D major and then we've got the same chord moved whole step up which, if we ignore the open fourth string, is actually just a simple E major triad and now we add the fourth string and we've got E major with D in the bass Very interesting, very... Uh, expecting type of chord, like uh, it's rushing you to go somewhere and do something. And um, the third chord is the same shape, moved uh, half step up, and this makes it F major triad with D in the bass. And we could uh, look at this chord from two different perspectives. First, you could just call it F major with D in the bass and the other variant is to ponder over it a little bit and figure out that here we have D, F, A and C and this actually makes a D minor 7 chord so this is the root, 3rd, 5th and here is the 7th we can apply the same logic to other chords like the ones that start from 5th string with 5th open string like A major This is the same type of logic All of this could work beautifully and uh, it's all about you exploring them and see what works for you and what not of course, we can go uh, down to the chords from the 6th string, they follow the same logic. Of course, that's by no means a full list of open string chords that you can use it's rather impossible to make such thing in a video but it's rather a simple guide for you to understand how these chords function how to build them and how to use them in your music so to make a quick recap take a simple chord from like these shapes that you know very well like the one that you play on an acoustic guitar on a bench in the park and uh, you start moving them and uh, just use the open strings and if the shape doesn't allow uh, open string just make space for them remove one or two fingers see what will happen and then analyze it and then you will understand what and why it works Generally, uh, a good guideline is uh, that the chords won't sound good if the open strings are clashing violently with the root of the chord or with the third of the chord. And uh, here are some examples. Mm, not really. Although, I don't know, probably this could exist in a Slayer song. <laughs> this one, not really. Here we have the same case. The open string is clashing with the third. Another example would be... Uh, not really. 
And of course, don't be afraid to experiment. If it sounds good to you, it's completely fine. And only the future you could judge you for making poor chord choices. Your music's bad and you should feel bad. So that's everything for today's episode. I hope you like it and find it useful. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments below which of these open string chords you like the most and why. And if you like my work, consider supporting me on Patreon on the link down in the description where you can get access to all kinds of interesting things like tabs, audio downloads, exclusive materials and many more and membership starts as low as $3 per month. And if you prefer to support me by a single donation, you can do so on the PayPal link below. If you're a first time viewer, please subscribe to my channel and click that bell notification button to get informed when I upload new video. See you next time, but remember, practice makes perfect.